Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here. And uh, for the last week, we've actually been on an island south of the Dominican Republic. And it was a it was a great time. It was a resort. It was only one of them on the entire island. And it's called the Bahia Principe, Cayo Levantado. And it was actually a really nice place. Uh, but we're back. And we, so what I did was I took 20 of my favorite properties, and that's from this weekend, but then also even stretching back to last week. And I'm going to share with you some insights, as we always do, and try and add some interpretation in with, uh, with the raw information. So uh, we start off with 1340 Main Street. It's at it's a 319. It's a two-bedroom. It is uh, 1082 square feet. So it's a Windsor model. If you if you know the models here, the Windsor's actually uh, just over a thousand square feet, but they have this turret in the second bedroom, and it adds the extra space. So it's almost eleven hundred here. They've done some uh, some wainscoting on the outside. They've done almost like a thicker molding, which I think is just a paint job between two pieces of wood. But whatever's clever, it looks great. It gives the rooms a uh, definitely a more formal feel. Upgraded fan there. That's not cheap to buy that fan. You've got uh, California shutters. You've got uh, just some nice stuff here. The California shutters on the turret windows, I think, look fantastic. Hardwood floors and so on. And 319 seems like a good price for this one. 255 on the condo fees. We've got another one in the same area. So this is at 3199. And so it's actually larger. It's 1184 square feet. So it's a two bedroom. And I just think that this amount of size, there's people that are downsizing from a larger house that would appreciate almost 1,200 square feet of space. And for this price at 319, the condo fees are less than $300. You still have a gym in here, so there's still some facilities. There's a party room, but they don't go overboard on amenities to try and keep the fees nice and low. Uh, so nice one, really, really nice. Uh, Wetton Hall is at 334.9, and so this one is an end unit. It's a Brent Ridge. It's almost 1,300 square feet. Looks like you've got a couple car parking spaces in the driveway. And I don't know why they needed five photos on the outside, but the point is it's got a nice open concept layout. The, uh, the floors are carpet, but you've got uh, pot lights. And we've actually seen models that I think don't look as good as this one that have sold even close to 350. So I think this one's actually a really, 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 really strong deal. Uh, Baverstock was at 344.9. So they were actually listed before. And I, I don't know what happened. Possibly the deal fell apart at the last minute before closing, but I was surprised to see them back out. I sold this exact same model in really rough shape probably two years ago for like 350 something. So at 344.9, I get that some people are going to walk in and say that they need to do some work. That's fine because this home is a killer deal. You could replace all the carpets and you could clean it up and hire Molly Maid to come over three times in a row and you would still be far under the budget of what most of them sell for. And I'll give you some context for that in just a second. Uh, but we've got Middleton, Middleton is the next one at 379. Nice 55 foot lot here. And when you look at the kitchen, I mean, it looks incredible for 380. I, this has got to be one of the better kitchens that I've seen in Old Milton for this kind of price. It's a semi-detached. They've even opened the walls up a little bit and they've got a finished basement. I mean, I don't know what else you could expect for 380 in uh, in this, this neck of the woods. And to have a nice 115 foot deep and, and over 50 feet wide, it's an absolutely amazing opportunity. So Barclay is at 379. And so this is the same model as the one on Baverstock. It's called a Clayton model. So it's uh, it, it, right on 1300 square feet. And this one even looks like it's a pretty solid deal uh, with the finished basement. And we sold a property similar to this one uh, in the 370s a couple months ago. This is the kind of home where everything else is clean and tidy, the finished basement and so on where they might have benefited from actually swapping out the white appliances in the kitchen with some stainless steel appliances. There are certain times when that can really, really add to the impression and it can certainly pay off in dividends. Uh, Yates is at 399, so it's just over 1200 square feet. It's called a Baker model. Yates can be a little bit busy. All you've got on this model is you've got one main floor room right here and then you've got your kitchen, and it is big enough to put uh, an eat-in table. It's pretty bright because of the big sliding doors. 
There's one full bathroom upstairs, and then they also have a finished basement. And I've seen this particular model sell in the past, you know, with the finished basement up in the fours. So if this one shows half decent, I think it's actually a good deal. It's on the same size property as homes that have probably 600 square feet more, uh, more size. So what you're actually getting is you're getting a bigger backyard than most of the other homes in the surrounding area, just because of the fact that the home's a little bit smaller. So that's a good, good listing here. We've got Lamont Crescent, more than 1,900 square feet of space. And it's, it's a pretty open concept floor plan. You've got a walkout basement, three pretty good sized rooms. There's your walkout with the, a fireplace in the corner. 409 looks good. You don't normally see this much size for a townhouse at this kind of price. It does back onto some of the live work units. So you actually do have some amenities nearby. You can go get a haircut, get your nails done. Lord knows there's enough nail places in there. Uh, but there's a little cafe, so there's some neat places to go within a relatively short distance. Um, it's in the Bruce Trail Public School District, which is great because the school actually has a built-in daycare as well. Luxton's 1860 square feet. It's a, um, it's a townland model, so you've got a front living dining, and they've got the front right in the front used as a kid's area. Uh, there's your family room, pot lights in the corners. Now you may look at the countertop and say, well, it's a blue countertop, I'm not gonna look at it. That is one of the easiest things to change. Those, those counters are, are probably to replace that is like $150. It's, it's very inexpensive. So I wouldn't let that hold you back from a decision to buy this home, especially because you've got a finished basement here, which if it's done well, I think they've priced it quite well because there's a park right next door. This area is really nice if you drive by it. It's in the, the Hawthorne Village School District, also regarded as a very, very strong uh, district. That's actually where my kids are. So we've got Bessie Trail at 499. Uh, we've got a double car garage. It's 1878 square feet and very strong deal. We've seen even the Quincy Corners through the rough times in, in the Christmas season sell for 520, 530. It's a shame the kitchen isn't really showing up very well and the, the picture's shrunk. It's got nice appliances. It's got the lighter cabinets to contrast with the darker floors. But just having the dark hardwood floors here, it's the three bedroom elevation. So what you get is actually a much larger ensuite and you get a little bit bigger bedroom space than the four bedroom. Because four bedrooms in less than 1900 square feet is a pretty tight fit. Uh, but somehow this model makes it work. So all in all, this again, another strong school district. Tiger Jeet is known as a, a, a good one. I think this is a great deal. I wouldn't be surprised if this one sold for more than asking. Uh, it's one of the cheaper options to get a double car garage home, especially at that size. So Lancaster's single car garage, 1850 square feet with a finished basement, uh, piggybacking some of the sales. So one at Clark and Trudeau, there was one on Donnelly. And it looks like they've done a pretty good job inside the house here. Kept it clean and tidy and everything looks like it's in order. Uh, nice little bonus feature is that you've got the bedroom with the fireplace, which is something that you don't see very often. You've got a home theater down in the basement. And uh, the way this one's set up, kind of interesting how they did the pot lights um, almost on like a 45 degree angle in the, uh, the ceiling. But the builder actually puts these dividing walls in just because of structural support. So you end up seeing that you get two or three rooms in the basement versus, versus one larger room. Uh, 518 definitely seems like the right price for this one. Uh, they do say exclusions, the media equipment. It is possible that maybe that gets negotiated in uh, for the right price. So Minto Crescent is 529. You've got a loft upstairs plus three bedrooms. The, the main floor is pretty much just one big open space and you can see that they've used the dining room plus the, uh, the family room. There's your kitchen off to the side. It's a pretty decent size. And then you've got uh, the rest of the rooms upstairs. Now, I've talked about this in past episodes, but if you don't have any grass in your backyard, you're definitely um, narrowing your audience. This is not cheap to put in. I bet you between the front and the back, they probably put 15,000 easily in landscaping. So the size of the home, I bet you it's less than 2,000 square feet. It is all brick and it's a pretty good spot on Minto Crescent. You can walk to the sports center. Um, they could get this. I definitely think that there's not a whole lot for sale right now. 
You may want to pick up the Quincy Corner, which is probably about the same size as that one for 20,000 cheaper. So Lancaster is 535. It's actually the same model that we saw in Bessie Trail. Um, actually, no, sorry, not Bessie Trail. That's the Quincy Corner. Um, so it's the Wyndham Corner. It's the one with the home theater. It's the same model as that one. You can see the basement's configured uh, with a couple separate rooms. And this one's just getting, it's getting laid to waste for, for almost 20,000 more. They're just, they're not competing well with the one at 518. Eager's at 539, so we have a, the, the reason I put this up is it's a little plain inside and it's got 2,400 square feet inside, so it's got a good amount of space. This garage is not truly a double car garage. You can see it's almost flush with the house on this side and there's very little space here and there's six garage panels. Typically what you see is eight garage panels. I doubt you can fit two cars in that garage because most of the ones on Eager you have a real tough time with. So. Inside, you can see the kitchen's a little plain. I don't know if the wall color is really adding anything to the cabinet colors, and the fact that it's vacant makes it even tougher to uh, to showcase. Um, honey colored wood versus what most people consider to be the style now is the darker wood. Might be a little tricky to sell, but I like it 540 being able to get 2,400 square feet. But if you're not a double car garage, then in my eyes, I don't care if it's a one and a half or one and seven eighths, you're a lot closer to a one car garage. However, we've seen single garages, 2,300 square feet sell for around 520, 530. So that's why I think they're not that far off. And there's some things that you can do inside to really change the appearance for a pretty low price. You can paint the, the cabinets and put them a little bit darker, uh, add some contrast, upgrade the appliances. And those are all things that in, in a manner of speaking, when we're talking about the house prices, it's not going to break the bank. It's like if you put 5000 into that home in the right spots, you could really make it go a long way. So Mock Ridge is 599 24, 27 square feet. It's a walnut model, a little bit higher than what you see most of the similar sized homes go for, but it's more upgraded. You've got an open kitchen, which most of the walnuts actually have a wall right here where the camera is. And they've got this all open. They've got the wine racks here. They could get it. I mean, move in ready. This is the message I wanted to convey with this home. Move in ready always commands a premium. Uh, Agnew Crescent, 629. You look at something like this. I mean, there's a hill of crap here, and then you've got a bin on this side, and then you have pictures of the kitchen without a countertop. I mean, it really looks horrible. And if that's the condition that builders leave homes, I'd be very surprised if, uh, I don't know if this one's closed yet or if they're trying to get a, a, a leg up on the market, but uh, boy, if you're writing a check for 629, I mean, even if you were if you were listing this home, would it not make sense to wait three or four days and you never have a second chance to make a first impression? That's, I guess, the message on this one here, uh, that if you're putting it out, the activity level is always highest in the first week. So do you want to waste the first week with photos here? And it may not be in the seller's control. However, I just think that the impression is not strong on this one. And I don't know if it's going to give them what they want, which is the highest percentage uh, chance to sell for a good amount of money, just like any seller. So Holloway Terrace is at 629. And so it's about 2,200 square feet. It's a nice floor plan, nice and open. The kitchen has uh, built-in appliances, lots of upgrades here. You've got that beautiful Heathwood eight-foot door. There's a family room upstairs plus three bedrooms and uh, certainly been upgraded. Lots of uh, nice landscaping in the back too. Uh, and just like I mentioned on the one that had almost exclusively interlock, it helps if you have a balance of patio plus green space in the backyard. Uh, it definitely opens your audience up. So Bustle Crescent, they started up in the sevens. Uh, they're a little bit lower here at 689. Lots of little details here, the wainscoting, the moldings, the pot lights. Uh, the kitchen looks obviously very, uh, very nice. You've got hardwood on the second floor, which doesn't have as high a return as the first floor, uh, but it, it can still be a good thing. Sometimes without any carpet in the house, you unlock people who uh, who really look for that. So 689, I think they're going to do okay. Scott Boulevard is, uh, is at 729. You've got 3,300 square foot, uh, but it's on Scott, right? So you look at it and you say, you know what? Like if you had 
you have a choice about whether you want to live on a busy street or not. And so that can be the tough part about this. It's like if you're, you know, maybe a first time buyer, there's some compromises you make to keep within an affordable budget. But I think somebody who's moving to this home probably already has a home. And so they're not necessarily, unless they've sold it, they're, they're looking for the right opportunity. And something like this, Scott, can really turn people away. Um, I think if you buy a home like this uh, on a busier street is you just want to buffer in enough of a discount on the price compared to homes that have sold on quieter streets that you know that if it if the busy street doesn't bother you it's probably going to bother the next buyer so you want to make sure that what you get in at is that if you sell it that you're going to be at an equivalent adjustment for uh, for what you paid so valley view is 735 and um, I think they were selling privately for a bit. They're now with uh, with an agent, so it's an 80 by 100 foot lot. I think it compares well to the uh, the other one that's for sale. I think the other one's slightly bigger on the north side of Valley View. Kitchen looks good here. Um, they've got the walkout basement. I don't know if they've they've really done the best job at showcasing the ravine, but I get that they want to show off the, uh, the 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 deck outside. So. Um, yeah, I think it compares well to uh, to what else is there. The same model as this one actually sold, uh, I believe, earlier this year, and the first number started with a six, so they could be contending with uh, with those kind of stats. So that's the list. That's the twenty that we've seen not only from this weekend but even last week. And uh, things obviously we wanted to point out. I wanted to thank you very much for tuning in, as always. And you know, it's when you come back from a vacation you really see things clear and, and it's really clear to me how neat it is that I can show up and share some of the stuff that I've learned in the last 10 or 11 years probably seeing more than 10,000 homes uh, with you and and so it's a real win-win and when it's time to, uh, to to buy or sell a home I hope that you know that we would take really good care of you and so if uh, there's anything we can do for you just give us a call reach out and we'd be glad to help so have a great day we'll see you tomorrow with more Milton Daily Homes.